guys said, um, right? They all said that um, you're pretty pumped that they made it through the prelim, having experienced um, how hard it is to get through a prelim. What did you say? We'll start with you, Peter D. What did you say um, to the guys once they made it through? Oh, just to enjoy it. I think um, it's the old line of um, you know the opportunity doesn't sort of present itself for footballers. I mean, you, you know, we could sort of rattle off uh, name after name, you know, sort of missing finals, let alone playing in grand finals. So I know my last grand final, I was 20 years of age, having just played in um, you know the one the previous year in 80, 81. So it wasn't another nine years until I got the opportunity. But I think. I think first and foremost, just to enjoy the week, you know, take it minute by minute. When I was a player, it's a job, so it, it becomes so serious that everything else is a bit of a blank leading into the week. So now looking back, I can't remember anything about it. So I, I think live it the old minute by minute, enjoy the week, um, the attention that it brings to you as an individual player and then to the club and the team. And um, yeah, and then, you know, come game day, you know, there's nothing to lose. Oh, it's just a great thing for the kids. And when that footballers work to play in the finals, that's what they do it for. And uh, you get an opportunity to play, as Pete says, the opportunity is, it just doesn't present itself very often. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just wrapped for them, for the team, the whole team, our boys, plus the, the rest of the team and the coaches and all the people behind the scenes because it's massive to get here. It's, just, it's a huge effort, particularly after last year, big disappointment up in Sydney. So um, they've all put their heads down and got to the grand final. So it's really just an opportunity to try and um, enjoy it. You say to enjoy it, but then there's so much going on, it's, it's tough and you just got to try and... The best part of the day is when you went out on the ground and it starts because it's uh, all preambles and over. So, no, just wrap for them and it's a great step in the journey uh, for their group, probably the other three of them and all the other boys as well. Laurie, you've spoken in the past about the grand final day being somewhat of a miserable day for you. Yeah, it can be. <laughs> <laughs> How does that change for you? Uh, it brings you yeah. back because it is disappointing. I played in four losing and one, one draw. And, um, Never played in the Premiership in my whole footy career from juniors all the way through. Darcy played play about 10 already, so he's <laughs> got me there in juniors and whatever. But, um, you know, so I know personally how hard they are to win. I coached one uh, and helped them after I retired. But, uh, and that was the biggest thrill of my career, was coaching the Premiership. So, um, at sort of a local level. So, uh, yeah, it's massive and uh, it, it is... Uh, there's going to be a disappointed group of boys, and a disappointed group of fans, and unfortunately, there can only be one winner. And, and it's uh, and the winner gets the chocolates, no one the losers get nothing. So, so uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be tough for one or two. So the thrill of coaching at local premiership, it was bigger than the Brownlow. Oh yeah, no question about it. Yeah, because it's such a journey and a different level, of course, but. You know, the group and trying to get a group together, trying to get through the injuries, get the right players, get the right attitude, get the playing for each other is a real challenge, you know, and then to get it uh, to the point where it all comes off and you, and you get over the line, you know, it was a big thrill. It was up at Eltham where I grew up and where I played with junior footy and, uh, and uh, yeah, you would have thought they'd won the AFL grand final with my players, they were off their brains about it. So it was a, it was a great experience. So. Uh, I have experienced it to that extent. And Pete was lucky to play in the, in the, in the 2010 uh, 90, 90. Uh, uh, um, Premiership. So, you know, I don't know where my word. <laughs> yeah, but, I'll uh, take anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, certainly um, hard when you lose, but uh, you just got to go out there, not worry about the result, just bring your, bring your game, bring, bring your role. and. Uh, play the system, and uh, if it's good enough, you yeah. win. Did you tell Darcy not to turn his medal into the crowd? Well, that's actually a bit of a... I, I, I just pretended to throw it away. It wasn't into the crowd. It was my fourth runner's up medal, so I didn't really need no one. <laughs> I had enough runner, have enough to the second. I did see Mick Malthouse when he lost one of those flags against Brisbane. His went in the bin in the players' room. So, uh, as a demonstration to his players of not accepting coming second. So basically there's no second place here. You know, there's one prize and uh, the second place people don't get one. So yeah, probably uh, as Dar said, not my finest moment, but I don't regret it because I'm determined to back it up and have another go. So, uh, Peter, how tough was it? 2018 for Darcy to miss out. He was so close, but just couldn't quite get it. He was close, so I was just nervous. Bucks was nervous about whether he could get through a game and um, 
Uh, it turned out to be pivotal, you know, because of the tall West uh, West Coast guys that really needed us to play. But uh, he had a tough run with those hamstrings and uh, not a lot of confidence in his hands. So tough to miss. Uh, if they'd had their time again, both Bucks and Darcy, I think he would have played. Yeah. Would you hey, play a Caleb of Curse? Yeah. Uh, 1979, yeah. Brownlow, yeah. 03 was Bucks, 11 was Swanee. Yeah. You're hoping the same doesn't happen to Nick? Yeah, well, I don't know. I think, uh, I don't believe in that. You know, we didn't have teams that were quite good enough when I was playing, and uh, this team isn't good, no question about it. So, uh, yeah, we won't, won't think of it that way. <laughs> so, how, uh, how would you say lives change if they win the Look, I think as a footballer, I mean, sort of, you know, recalling um, just sort of my experience, I mean, I remember a lot about my career by way of individual sort of things. People don't actually talk about it. I might, might get one guy, you know, talks about something that happened at Waverley 40 years ago, but it's sort of news to me. It's because it's it's long, long gone and sort of, it's just evaporated. Um, 1990 is something that occurred. 33 years ago, but no matter where I go, it's so vivid. It's it's, it's as if we played the game five years ago. It's constantly relived. So when I'm getting petrol or getting some groceries or getting a coffee, it's got me a few beers if somebody wants to. But, but um, was always there, weren't they? Yeah, someone yeah. Was there. Someone and, and and Tommy Hafey, I'll never forget Tommy when I was a kid, and oh, I don't remember more if you remember, but he'd say that when your career's over and and, and done with. People are not going to sit there listening to you talk about your individual career. I mean, they, but they never get tired about talking about the team things. It's so true. And so, for the boys, it's something. And as as you know, for all our boys, uh, for for any of the footballers, uh, it'll become a you know, if you enjoy this week and the game and the win um, that that comes with it. Um, well, you can multiply that 50 times over once you leave the game. So. Th that's important um, as a footballer, re, you know, in and around winning these type of games. Pete, how would you cover for the... Uh, where will you be? Brownlow not? What, what are you playing? Oh, well, I've got a Learjet on uh, ready. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I, I, look, I'm, look, it's just been a whirlwind, really, the last couple of years. And, and, and you know, we just keep, you know, getting sort of the niceties of, of, of what football can bring. And, yeah, look, we're... You know, there, there's not a huge expectation, you know, um, but, you know, if he's able to, you know, get close, well, fantastic, you know, so we'll, we'll let it play out. And But I, I don't think, uh, I may, you know, if, if, if it comes to be, well, you know, um, I don't think we'll be that far away. So, um, and it'll be, again, for the club and, you know, um, what they've been able to create over the last two years, you know, has is, is just been really special. All so, right, three more yeah. really quick ones. Uh, Pete, Tom. how would you cover uh, for the loss of McStay up forward? How do you restructure that? Um, well, yeah, again, it, 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 I, yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of having someone a little bit versatile and, you know, we, we are, I know we haven't scored heavily in the last couple of games, but we can score. I mean, what we've proven over the last couple of uh, games, and uh, especially our ability to shut teams out. I mean, six minutes to go, and they had all the running, and and, and probably had ventured into 50 more times than us in the, in that last quarter. So, you know, we're we're pretty diligent in all parts of the ground. But um, uh, Dan's loss is huge because um, it creates a, a big problem for for the matchups for them to cover all all avenues in our forward line. But yeah, I like the, and I think it's, it's uh, the weather comes into it. It's going to be 28. We've had 24 rounds or thereabouts, 26 games, you know, for some of these guys. So the bodies may not be where they should. So maybe a running type player that can play in a vers in, in versatile positions, you know, multiple Qu positions. Question for you, either of you. We focus so much on footy, but what what does this do? And what does we do for the bond with your sons? And, and no, the bonds already there, so it makes no difference at all to me. I don't know if they, yeah, another sign. No, I don't care if they play AFL or not. You know, I'm more interested in, uh, in them as people, you know, and uh, Darcy is, is my son. In fact, he plays football. Well, good, you know, that doesn't really, isn't that significant. But I'm just happy to see them do what they love doing and do it well, and then we can sit back and watch it, you know, reflect about the glory, perhaps. When you, I, 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 just, I think. Um, 
Yeah, probably not. I do. Uh, I do enjoy going on the footy and watching the boys. And and and, and I say that that. Um, and, and Maury, you know, knows where I'm coming from. You know, people get to see a finished product. You know, so with any of these footballs run out there, but but when you're in house, I mean, you get to see all the work that goes into it. So I think. Um, you know, now we, we, we get to the line and, and, and uh, that's what's going to be more pleasing about it, that the boys are able, all the work that's gone into it. And this, this hasn't been the pre-season just previously passed. This, is, this has been a build over three and four years, you know, and then, you know, um, layers have been added and, and all of a sudden we, we find ourselves in this position. So the pleasing thing is that the, the boys are able to come away with something. When you... When your boys was clear they're going to play for Colin, what advice did you give them about playing to Colin? Like no, play for this club in particular. Oh, I, I don't. I didn't have to give any advice. He was going to always going to play for Colin. Mm. Him, you know. So, uh, <laughs> he was fortunate. I was coaching down here a bit, and uh, with Mick and uh, Darcy's was off, off in the rooms as a seven-year-old running around, and uh, Mick used to kick the footy with him in the rooms, you know, before the game and all that. So he was focused. If he was good enough, he was going to play for Colin. And I'm sure Peach boys would get the same. You know, Pretty obvious, quite young, that they're going to be good enough. And it's just a question of um, it just sort of unfolded really for us. No special decision. Yeah, I think just getting the opportunity is, is great for them. I mean, these, you know, you look at, um, you know, how many picks each club sort of allocates uh, leading into the next year. I mean, um, you know, is it three or is it four? Is it two in some cases? So. And, and you know, for every kid that makes it, how many miss out? So I think it's the old Willy Wonka golden ticket. You know, you, you get the opportunity, so it's pretty special. Um, and our, and in a sense, you know, you know, our boys probably get uh, the opportunity to get looked at. So yeah. Yeah. a bit lucky to have got the sons as well. You know, have a son that can't play, so we're very lucky to play. Lucky for them, maybe, because there's a lot of expectation with the little, but uh, you know. From outside, you know, expectations are going to be good. So, fortunately, they've, they've all, you know, got the ability. So, it's great to get the chance. That's really the thing. Get the chance to play for a great club, play in a great final series, and maybe hopefully have a great uh, victory uh, with your mates. And uh, it will work super hard on the whole team. So, uh, we hope they get the chocolate.